they will not fulfill the business need, they will not be ready in time, and they will cost much more than you thought. Hello and welcome to Architecture Corner. I'm in Lund with Kasimir Artman and we are here to talk about requirements. It's about when you collect too many requirements, you want a lot of things and you sit in workshops and you collect everything you want to do. It's like when a child he wants a Christmas list and he looks through the catalogue and everything he sees he wants. Mm -hmm you can't handle it. So, so you're saying the requirements become a wish list? There are requirements, as we had talked to earlier, that is from a legal perspective. Mm, legal and regulatory requirements. Yeah. And then? We have those requirements that are needed to fulfill the business need. Mm. But here it's very easy, and especially today when we have lots of data to require that we should measure everything. Mm. And the question is, what are the important requirements and what are the less important requirements. So, so when you work with uh, requirements, how, how, how do you work with requirements? Uh, this is very different uh, depending on the customer. The normal way of looking at requirements is, yes, I want this function, I want this function, I want to do this, I want to have this report, I want to look in this database. And you mean as a user I want to yeah. look in this database? Yeah. So more that I can less. see the data? Yeah, more or less. Mm -hmm. And you don't think what should I do with it? What's the benefit for the customer, for the business with this information? It's knowing too much. So uh, I like to work with requirements in a hierarchy where we have high-level requirements like, which are related to what is the purpose of this company yeah. and what is the purpose of this product. Yeah. And uh, this is or, the business need. Yes, so we, we want to be a, a good company that does good thing for our customers etc and a bit more elaborated than that of course. And then, top, um, uh, then we have features which are things that describe what we want to achieve. We want to give people the ability to make phone calls. We want to, give, we want to be able to charge money for these phone calls yeah. and so on. Then we have lower level, lower level requirements that say things like, OK, we need to print a phone bill that has the correct sum. And then we have even lower requirements that says we need to use yellow paper because... Uh, yeah, and also that we should measure how often we must measure how often a customer makes a phone call mm -hmm. because that's what we charge for. How often should I check this? Should I check this once a month? Do I need to check if he made a phone call and his wife made a phone call? We can do it because we have the data, but does it benefit? Okay. So it's the question of the requirements we have, are they beneficial? And mm -hmm. then we have the other side of the coin, and that is if we want to develop an IT system or use a standard system, then it costs money to do development and but it costs money to make configuration. So when you say uh, that you want to measure how much we call, how long we call, etc., yeah. uh, because you need to make a bill, on my phone subscription uh, it's a flat rate. Yes. So uh, no one really needs to measure it. We had an example uh, more than uh, 10 years ago when we look at the cost of making a billing system was too expensive if you want to measure all the data packages at that time mm -hmm. compared to have a very simple flat rate. Yes, so, so sometimes the requirements uh, are not really requirements, they're just a way of describing uh, how we used to do things in the past. You want as much information as possible in order to be secure that you take the right decisions, but you don't know if this information is relevant or not. We made an episode about, uh, about uh, the over-information and uh, I think there will be a link in the screen right now. So. Yeah, and this is 
all we talked about to have too much requirements on the wrong requirements mm. but also from a system perspective 25 years ago there was not so many standard systems so we were forced to do our own development or heavily customize standard systems today the standard system have the basic functionality and instead of asking for a lot of requirements for the business we should look at what are the standard systems giving us for possibilities to improve our business so so uh, i heard the head of sap say once that people ask for customizations uh, for our, from our system but they shouldn't because our system embodies best practice in some way he's correct and that is also the challenge for the business because of the IT will not be differentiator. Everybody can use the same IT system, they can use the same components, so they have to have another other differentiator. And that means not the production, how you produce. It's more about the products and the services you sell. Not so long ago, we received very long requirement documents from customers uh, asking for proposals. Uh, 500 requirements were not uncommon. Like, uh, we want to have a scanning system. There should be a scanner in the scanning system. There should be a button that you can press scan. You should be able to place pages on this, in the scanner, etc. Yeah. Uh, 500 requirements. Uh, but now we're seeing, uh, we're seeing many, many uh, procurements where we have nine or 10 requirements. Yeah. And I think it's, this is a little about how mature uh, the customer to the IT companies are. If you are very mature, then you understand that if we are too detailed in the requirements, it will cost us too much and we will not gain the benefits, uh, the experience that the software companies has today. When you have too many requirements, the system is over-specified and it, it, it might be impossible to build it because yeah. it might be that these requirements are contradictory yeah. or that they make it impossible to use any standard system. Yes, and then we have the third part and I know that you are very much for agile development. I'm the more waterfall approach. When we have too many requirements and a waterfall approach you will not be able to succeed because it takes too long time from you do the requirements until you're ready. So that the requirements may not be relevant and you will not be sure that the... So, so there are these uh, people, that people say that you should not do projects longer than six months because it's virtually impossible to succeed. I agree, but if you're doing platforms, then you have to think in advance. I don't think that you should do software implementation program that is more than eight to ten months because then the time is too long. You miss the focus. And you, you miss the market. Yes, also. And the market is faster and faster today. If you want to do a long project, you should do uh, deliveries uh, inside the project so that you have a chance to have your solution and your requirements meet the market. And even if you can't go live externally with the service because you are moving from something old to something new, then you must be able to take it in production internally and test it and see what is possible to do. You can't go and find out everything from the beginning. You will not be correct. You have to learn. It's like practicing an instrument. You can't play a very advanced tune immediately. You have to practice. And it's in, the same with the requirements of software development. In Kanban, there is a work in progress uh, limit concept. Even for requirements, I would say, so that you cannot have more requirements than uh, being worked on than you can process. Yeah, that, I think that's a good thing to have. If we look at statistics about successful products, products that are too big and too long time, they will not fulfill the business need, they will not be ready in time, and they will cost much more than you thought. Thank, thank you very much, Casimir, for, for uh, this uh, discussion about too many requirements. It was very good meeting you again. And uh, for the viewers out there, remember to like, share and subscribe. 
and welcome back to Architecture next week.